If you've been following the Blue Blur since his debut in the early 90s, you probably caught most of the Easter eggs in his feature film debut. If you're a more casual fan, there are bound to be a couple you missed. Just like Sonic himself, they go by pretty fast. Before Sonic arrives on Earth, he lives in a lush, green paradise modeled after the first level of his debut video game. More on that in a moment. Unfortunately, young Sonic's blissful existence doesn't last long. It turns out that everybody wants Sonic's super speed, including a tribe of animals that chase Sonic from his home planet to ours. Those aren't just any critters chasing Sonic through the prologue, though. They're members of the Knuckles Clan, a tribe of echidnas that originally appeared in Archie Comics' record-busting Sonic the Hedgehog line. The most popular member of the clan to us is Sonic's ally Knuckles, who was named after the tribe. Clearly, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie's take on the Knuckles clan is a little different from the comics lore, but it's still cool to see them pop up. If they lead to an appearance by Knuckles himself in the sequel, even better. But what you really need is some serious muscle. You mean me, right? Right. Most of Sonic the Hedgehog takes place in a sleepy Montana town called Green Hills, which was established in 1981, just a couple of years before Sega released its very first video game console. Nothing much happens there, at least not until the little blue alien who calls Green Hills home gets angry and attracts the government's attention. Green Hills is an appropriate place for Sonic's adventure to start, given that it's named after the first level of the inaugural Sonic the Hedgehog video game. When Genesis owners booted up Sonic the Hedgehog in 1991, Green Hill Zone was the first location that players visited. Since then, Green Hill Zone's grassy slopes, angular palm trees, and unstable cliffs have gone on to become one of the franchise's most recognizable sites. Since Sonic the Hedgehog, the Green Hill Zone has reappeared in Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Forces, Sonic Mania, Sonic Generations, Super Smash Bros., and plenty of other games. You can even build a papercraft version of the Green Hill Zone if you want. The Green Hill Zone is one of the most famous levels in all of gaming, and it's a good thing it's in the movie. It just wouldn't be Sonic without it. Sonic the Hedgehog has a large and extremely dedicated fan base that loves to express itself. Unfortunately, fans' abilities don't always live up to their passion. Spend a few minutes browsing DeviantArt and you'll see what we mean. There's an upside, though. As terrible as some Sonic fan art is, it's a great source of memes, some of which have become just as famous as Sonic himself. Even the official Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account has gotten in on the fun, and naturally, the movie does as well. Early in the film, Green Hill's resident kook, Crazy Carl, shows off a crude rendering of the Blue Devil, a not-so-mythical creature that only Carl knows exists. Well, if you've spent any time on the internet, you'll recognize Carl's drawing immediately. It's a very close recreation of the infamous Sanic Hedgehog, the star of a surreal YouTube video who starred as a nightmarish picture of Sonic and has become a character all of his own. Later, when Sonic wakes up from a Robotnik-induced stupor, he exclaims, gotta go fast, before racing all over a suburban San Francisco home. That's also a meme. In 2008, an endearingly awful drawing of Sonic adorned with the phrase, Gotta Go Fast, which originated in Sonic X's title theme, appeared on the fansite Sonic Central. Ever since, Gotta Go Fast has been a rallying cry for fans of bad fan art, and often appears on parodies mimicking the original drawing's weird, blobby hedgehog. Back in the days when Genesis did what Nintendo don't, every kid knew that Sonic was way cooler than Mario. Just look at the evidence. Sonic could move much faster than Nintendo's fat, lazy plumber. Supposedly thanks to the Genesis much-hyped and mostly bogus blast processing capabilities. Not only that, but Sonic had 90s-style attitude to spare. When you booted up Sonic the Hedgehog, the title character greeted you with a cocky grin. If you left him standing in one place for too long, he'd tap his foot, shoot you a dirty look, and, in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and later titles, impatiently check his watch. Sonic's irreverent idol animation has become suitably iconic, and while Ben Schwartz's big-screen version of the character isn't as cocky as his 16-bit iteration, he's just as impatient. Near the end of the movie when Sonic is facing down Jim Carrey's Dr. Robotnik, the manic scientist launches a flurry of rockets at the furry hero. Except to someone who moves as fast as Sonic, an attack like that is no problem. As he waits for the rockets to hit, Sonic taps his foot and checks his watch, exactly like he does in the game, before leaping into action. You might know him best as Dr. Evo Robotnik, 
but in Japan, Sonic's arch nemesis was originally called Eggman. In fact, as Takashi Izuka, the head of Sega's Sonic team, tells Game Informer, that's what the people behind Sonic's video games still call him. As Izuka tells the story, Sega of America changed the character's name while localizing Sonic the Hedgehog without consulting the character's creators first. Unfortunately, when Sonic became popular, the name Robotnik stuck. Eventually, frustrated by having to deal with the villain's dual identity, Sonic Team decided to make Evo Robotnik the villain's canonical name, and Eggman his nickname. The mad scientist has been known by both monikers ever since. I just thought you might like a latte with steamed Austrian goat milk. Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them! Sonic the Hedgehog also pays tribute to Eggman's dual identity. As the movie nears its climax, Sonic mocks Jim Carrey's Robotnik by nicknaming him Eggman, although he comes by the name a little differently than the developers did. In the games, Robotnik is impossibly round, giving him an egg-like appearance. In the film, Sonic has a habit of giving people food-based nicknames. Just ask Tom Donut Lord Wachowski if you don't believe us. So when he realizes that some of Robotnik's drones look like eggs, well, he really has no other choice. In the video games, the main soldiers in Dr. Robotnik's mechanical army are cyborg creatures known as Badniks. Powered by live animals, which they use like batteries, the Badniks roam Sonic's homeworld searching for Chaos Emeralds, building super weapons like the Death Egg and doing everything they can to stop Sonic and his friends. Unfortunately, while Robotnik uses a number of technological terrors to wage war on Sonic and Tom, the Badniks don't appear in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. However, they could've. Apparently, Robotnik has already made them. Later in the movie, when he's trying to harness the power from Sonic's supercharged quill, Robotnik accidentally shorts out his mobile headquarters. When he opens the fuse box to restart the device, we see a few different switches, each of which are labeled with pieces of masking tape. What does one of them say? Why, Badniks, of course. Okay, okay, there's only one way you missed this Easter egg. You walked out of the theater as soon as the end credits started. If so, shame on you. You missed the most crowd-pleasing moment in the entire movie, not to mention the appearance of one of the most popular Sonic characters of all time. Yes, that's right. After Sonic the Hedgehog's pixel art credits sequence ends, none other than Sonic's number one sidekick and best friend, non-Tom edition, Miles Tails Prower makes his theatrical debut. With a gust of wind, Tails appears out of what seems to be another interplanetary portal. It turns out that Tails is searching for Sonic. And while he's happy that the Hedgehog is nearby, he's also worried. As he soars off into the distance, Tails mutters to himself, has he found Sonic too late? Too late for what? Sadly, we don't know. Not yet, anyway. If Sonic the Hedgehog is a box office success, the sequel should answer that question and put Tails front and center. Here's hoping. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.